Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at another keyboard. This one, the F65 Graffiti Diary from iQnix. Now iQnix didn't send me this keyboard for review. I purchased this myself. So if it sucks, I'm definitely gonna let you know. As of the making of this video, this keyboard currently retails for 159 US dollars. And before we get started, we just hit 2000 subscribers on this channel. So I'd just like to thank you for supporting and watching the videos. It really means a lot. All right, so let's start with the all important sound test. The F65 Graffiti is, according to iQnix, housed in a premium aerospace grade aluminum case. It has PBT keycaps with a KDA profile. The F65 has 67 keys and has support for full N key rollover. It has three different connectivity options with a response time of one millisecond for both wired and wireless 2.4 gigahertz modes and eight milliseconds for Bluetooth. The polling rates are a thousand hertz for wired and 2.4 gigahertz with 125 hertz for Bluetooth. It has a 2000 milliamp battery, which I believe iQnix claims to last for 3000 hours with the RGB off, which charges via USB-C. The graffiti is compatible with Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. Note that Windows 7 or previous versions only support the wireless 2.4 gigahertz connection. The F65 graffiti keyboard is only available with RGB and comes in either gold pink, speed silver, or holy panda switches. Included in the box is the keyboard itself, the keyboard manual, a red key switch puller, a keycap puller, a retractable keyboard brush, which is a really cool addition and I'm not sure why more keyboard manufacturers don't include this. It also comes with a braided USB-C to USB-A cable with the iQnix logo on both ends of it. And lastly, some Mac supplementary keycaps covered with the same beautiful graffiti designs. Also included, of course, is the wireless 2.4 gigahertz dongle. My version came with the linear gold pink switches, though you have the option to get speed silver or holy panda switches when purchasing this one. The switches are made by TTC and it has a hot swappable PCB, which is great if you want to change out the switches later on. The keycaps are made from a PBT material and are a bit wider than average with a nice curve to them, providing a comfortable typing experience. The keyboard has a KDA profile for reducing fatigue and there are four rubber feet on the bottom, the top two being larger to give the keyboard some incline. The iQnix logo is in the middle and F65 is written at the bottom with a cool design. Lastly, there's a wired or wireless toggle at the bottom. First, let's talk about what I like about this keyboard. If you're gonna take away anything from this video, know that this keyboard has a very comfortable typing experience. I've had no issues typing on this keyboard for extended periods of time, and for both productivity and gaming, it's been excellent. The keycaps are a bit wider than normal, with a nice curve to them, which contributes to the overall typing comfort. The F65 Graffiti, in my opinion, has a beautiful and unique design, and it's a solid feeling keyboard that sits firmly on your desk. The three connection options are great, with the Bluetooth, wireless 2.4 gigahertz, and wired options. The wireless 2.4 gigahertz option makes this a great wireless keyboard for gaming, and I've really been enjoying playing games with this keyboard. Additionally, the RGB lighting is great, with some awesome modes to choose from. The short list of cons that I have with this keyboard are fairly similar to the ones I noted with the previous keyboard I reviewed in the OG80 Black Tangerine. Note that I'm going to be really nitpicking here. 
First, the LED indicator on the keyboard can be a bit confusing in terms of colors. While some colors like red indicate low battery, there are some other colors like turquoise, yellow, pink, and more that indicate different keyboard statuses like Bluetooth and 2.4 GHz reconnecting. It might not be immediately obvious what each color means, so until you memorize them, you'll need to refer to the manual constantly. Specifically on the F65, due to the size, the LED indicator is underneath the keys in the center of the keyboard, so it's not the most visible. The OG80 by comparison has its LED indicator nicely placed on the top left, as it can obviously afford to being a bigger keyboard. One thing I've noticed is that some keys, like the tilde, are hard to type due to the size of the keyboard. This can be particularly annoying for software engineers like myself who work on the command line frequently, as I need to press function, shift, and escape to access it, for example. Lastly, if you care, there are no dedicated media keys, so you'll need to revert to using the function key plus different key combinations. This is the second iQnix keyboard that I've reviewed, and I've personally loved both of them. The F65 Graffiti Diary is a really unique looking pre-built keyboard, and I personally love the design of this. Now, if you opt for the F97 version of the Graffiti Diary, you also have the option of getting a red case instead of the standard black one, making the keyboard stand out even more. Importantly, the typing experience is great here. I really like the shape of the keycaps, they have a good width, and a really cool curved design which makes the typing experience really comfortable. Honestly, it's one of my favorite things about this keyboard. The option for Bluetooth, wireless 2.4 gigahertz, and wired are of course all great, and I really personally appreciate having the wireless 2.4 gigahertz dongle as it makes this keyboard great for gaming. For my use case of programming, some productivity here and there, and gaming, this has been a fantastic tool. The overall build quality here is fantastic, and the keyboard sits firmly on your desk. Being the second iQnix keyboard that I've reviewed, I must say that iQnix makes a great keyboard. They're fairly priced for a premium keyboard, and even if you don't personally like the design of the F65 Graffiti Diary, there are so many other options that iQnix provides to choose from, so there's usually something for everyone. Overall though, if you're looking for a smaller keyboard that looks great sitting on your desk, has a really nice unique design to it and stands out from the competition, and is also good at productivity and gaming, the F65 Graffiti Diary is a great option. That's about all I have for this one guys. If you like this video, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so that way you're notified when I release new videos. Also, please be sure to drop a comment down below. I'd really like to hear from you guys and your opinions on the Graffiti Diary, whether or not you like the design or whether you don't. Either way, I'll be glad to hear from you. And if there are some keyboards that you think I should check out, please let me know as well. I've got more tech, desk setup, and gaming content planned as usual, so please stay tuned for that. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Yeah. See ya. I got floaters in my eyeball, coasters by the shot glass, smoking let my mind fall, plenty roaches, no ash, stepping on the critters, jitters going through my spine, should be used to a state of a poor man's mind, it's just PB no J, huh? Kool-Aid no sugar, boiling a bath, water for warm showers in winter.